Hi and welcome to Learn Biology with Becky. The topic we're going to focus on today is the alimentary canal, also known as the digestive system, and it's part of the animal nutrition topic on the IGCSE course. So we're going to start with the mouth. Obviously this is where you place food, okay, and the, the process of placing food into the mouth to be processed is known as ingestion. And the teeth that start to break up the food into smaller parts. This is really important because it will actually provide a large surface area for chemicals known as enzymes to break down or digest the food so that we can actually absorb it into our bloodstream. The tongue, which is a muscle, rolls the food into a ball known as a bolus and this helps us um, be able to swallow it easily down the back of the um, esophagus. This helps us to easily swallow food um, down and into the stomach. Um, the salivary glands produce saliva. Now saliva, first of all, it makes the food nice and moist, so it can be swallowed um, easily. And also it contains a chemical, um, an enzyme known as amylase, which is important in breaking down a carbohydrate called starch in our food. So I'm not going to go too much into that because I'm actually going to cover that in detail in my chemical digestion video. So please have a watch. Food passes down the esophagus into the stomach. There's an important flap known as the um, epiglottis. Now what happens when you swallow is the epiglottis basically closes off the lungs via the trachea. So that means hopefully food will not pass down into the lungs and cause choking. So also always be careful with your swallowing of your food. Don't talk while you're eating and all of these things because it can unfortunately mean that food sometimes gets past the epiglottis and then you'll end up in, yeah, not in a great way, okay? So the esophagus is a muscular tube and there are um, waves of contraction of muscle in that tube that help push the food down and into the stomach and that's called peristalsis. When food reaches the stomach it is met with um, quite a low pH, around about pH 2 and that's due to the fact that our stomach can actually release hydrochloric acid into the um, stomach. Now the hydrochloric acid is really important because it helps defend against pathogens that may enter the body via our food and drink and also it provides the optimum conditions for an enzyme that breaks down protein known as pepsin. Again more on that in my chemical digestion video. After food has been in the stomach for up to can be four, four hours or so, it now passes into the small intestine and there's a lot more processing that takes place in the small intestine. Basically anything that we can digest that we have the enzymes for will be fully broken down in the first part of the small intestine known as the duodenum. As you then move into the second part of the duodenum known as the ileum, that's where food starts to be absorbed. Now I've got a video on absorption which talks all about how um, this part of the intestine is highly specialised for absorption so please watch and find out more. Finally, what's left after absorption is really what we can't digest and that's known as fibre. As it passes along the large intestine, water is reabsorbed and the faeces become more solid and firmer. Any uh, water soluble minerals or vitamins in our food will also be absorbed into our bloodstream here. Finally, what's left is then going to reach the rectum where it's fairly solid, hopefully not too dried out or else we're going to have issues passing the faeces, which it is now called. The rectum stores the faeces until it um, receives information from the brain and then the anal sphincter will open and the faeces will pass through the anus um, and that's known as egestion and it's not the same as excretion because excretion means the removal from the body of waste that has come from a chemical reaction in our cells. What faeces is is basically what we can't really break down um, so it's not actually been part of a chemical reaction in the body. A lot of students I teach get those two things confused, they sound quite similar, they begin with the letter E which doesn't help, they end in ION, but just be careful, excretion and ingestion, very different. Excretion might be for example breathing out carbon dioxide which has come from the reaction of respiration in our cells. Ingestion is purely the removal of faeces from the body via the anus. Okay, right, the accessory organs then, um, there's two that I'm going to mention, in fact, sorry, three. First of all, the liver. The liver's actually got lots of different roles in the body. Um, it's a real um, important detoxification organ. One of the things it breaks down, of course, is alcohol. Um, hopefully you guys don't know too much about that. And in terms of digestion, it makes a chemical called bile. Now bile I'm also going to talk about in my chemical digestion video because bile is a key player in helping the breakdown of lipids. It doesn't actually chemically break down the lipid itself, 
but it provides um, um, a kind of helping hand, if you like, for the enzymes that do do that to break down of lipid. Now, the gallbladder and the liver are quite easy to mix up. The gallbladder is a much smaller structure, and the gallbladder is just purely storing the bile. Liver makes it, gallbladder stores it. When it's required in the small intestine, it's released down a duct, which is basically a small tube, into the small intestine, into the duodenum. The other organ is the pancreas, and the pancreas also has um, a number of different roles in the body, one of which um, will come under the topic homeostasis, which is all about regulating blood sugar, making sure your blood sugar is not too high, not too low. But in terms of digestion, it's one of the key places we make lots of digestive enzymes. Now, they don't actually digest anything in the pancreas as such. They're actually released down, again, a small duct called the pancreatic duct, where they actually work in the duodenum to fully digest our food, hopefully, so that it's small enough and soluble enough to pass into our bloodstream. And then, of course, it can be used by our body cells. Now, how our body cells use what's come from our food is um, known as assimilation. So they may make it into storage products. So like glucose, for example, if we've got excess glucose, we'll store it away as a, um, a chemical called glycogen in our muscle and in our livers, in our liver. And then you may store, um, obviously, fatty acids and glycerol may be stored away as fat in the body to protect organs for insulation and so on. Um, I'm going to be doing a series of videos in this um, topic that's called animal nutrition and or human nutrition, as it may be called on your exam board. So please do watch them all because actually this is quite a large, fairly complex topic. Anyway, thanks for listening and I hope it's helped.